Environmental Science and Technology annually recognizes best papers based on selection by the editors and advisory board. In this video series, the top three papers in science, technology, and policy of 2009 were profiled. We now present the runners-up. Antibiotics are widely used to defend against disease, but bacteria are quickly evolving resistance. Knapp and colleagues showed the extent of this by genetic analysis of soils since 1940. Their work can guide usage to keep pathogens at bay. Biomonitoring tracks bodily presence of chemicals, typically in blood and urine. Payne Sturges and others use the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey database to calculate children's exposure to multiple organophosphate pesticides that affect the development of the nervous system. Their approach can make biomonitoring a more effective public health tool. Humic substances are large organic molecules that act like proton-electron sponges to control biogeochemistry in wetlands. Aishberger and his collaborators described a new electrochemical method to monitor humic substances to help understand, for example, bog sulfur budgets and production of methane. Zero-valent iron can remediate heavy metal contaminants in soil and water. Flurry and colleagues reported on the performance of a zero-valent iron barrier to make toxic hexavalent chromium into a safer trivalent. Their work could help improve cleansing of other contaminated aquifers. Perfluorinated compounds like Teflon travel long distances from factories and show up in everyone's blood. Armitage and his research partners modeled these compounds' transport and fate to understand the importance of molecular structure. Their results can aid global tracking of pollutants. Coal generates much electricity in the U.S. Newcomer and Apt modeled the effect of banning new coal generators, finding near-term demand will have natural gas release similar to CO2. Such work can guide energy policy and help identify better available alternatives. Environmental justice is concerned that socioeconomic status and racial identity determine environmental risk. Sue and colleagues developed a method to gauge this phenomenon and applied it to Los Angeles populations. Their findings can aid risk assessments for policymakers. Look to ESNT in 2011 for the best papers from 2010. Also, watch for the January 1, 2011 special issue on environmental policy, past, present, and future, features for a wide audience, and research on 40 years of greater environmental consciousness.